Let me stop. Let me stop. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, y'all. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your illustrious host, Khadija. Um, I'm just going to do a quick update um, on Brittany Griner. There have been, I've seen a few questions of uh, People ask me on the sports channel, it's like, if I heard anything, no, no more than anyone else. And the amazing thing is, um, according to what they say, is that the Russians don't, I mean, well, her family and whatnot, for whatever reason, they don't want a lot of attention. Uh, because they may, they think that that may have an outright um, effect on how they're handling Britney. So the request was made that uh, um, as little as possible, I guess, be spoken of her. And I think that's rather dangerous because if you go into complete shutdown mode, it seems to me as if that would be an adversarial uh, idea because then you won't know what's happening. I admit that overkill and constant bar, uh, you know, constant bombarding the Russian government with questions about Britney could be detrimental. So I respect that. However, there's a, a fine line with that in terms of how to treat her case. So with that being said, let me give you the latest um, on her case. The State Department released this, um, and they said that uh, um, earlier this year, of course, she was arrested at a Russian airport when cannabis oil was found in her luggage. She could end up facing multiple years in prison as a result. U.S. Representative Byron Burgess Owens have since called on the Biden administration to send a message to Russian President Vladimir Putin. In a letter to President Biden and Secretary um, Antonio Blinken, Donald and Urich urged Biden to take action and call on Putin to not make American citizens political pawns in this uh, situation. That's what Biden asked, request. Okay, that made me lose my place. Okay, but you know, it's. I just still think it's kind of weird to me that Britney's been playing in Russia for what, maybe five years or so. And I don't think she just started smoking cannabis. Um, I don't know if she was detained for that purpose. But anyway, um, you know, it's pretty interesting because I would imagine that it have to be pretty scary to be in a foreign country in jail. It kind of reminds me of a movie called Midnight Express. And I don't know how many of you guys have seen that movie. It was about a guy from right here, Wisconsin. Uh, his ass went to Turkey and he tried to bring back some hash and he strapped it to it. Y'all might not know nothing about that hash. I'll probably just know about the oil, but back in the day, we used to smoke the hash. Oh uh, boy. And he tried to uh, come back and he was tortured as if he'd murdered people. He was, oh God, he was, 
And all this stuff, a lot of things were done to him by the warden. It was really horrible. So, I, you know, one of my sister-in-laws went to uh, uh, school with him. So it was really kind of interesting how um, his his life turned out. I never could understand how a person could pee in jail like that overseas and have all that stuff happen to them when they know. Well, actually, they probably take out their hatred for America out on it, uh, the captives, right? So I'm just wishing the well the, the best for Brittany. Uh, you know, she's facing up to 10 years if she's convicted. But the good news is that she has full access to her legal team. And that was the last thing uh, we do. We did know that she does have full access to the legal team. So her family, I'm sure, and everybody is concerned. And most of the press, is, as you can see, is honoring their wishes by having less coverage about Britain. So let's just keep her in our prayers. So if you like what you hear, please subscribe, please share, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.